Hello and welcome back to a Tasty Blender series. Yes, today I'll be showing you how to create this little animation right here. Sort of like a marble machine, but with a fun twist to it. Before we continue, this is going to be a multiple video series, meaning we'll first take a look at modeling, then we'll go into physics and animation, texturing, rendering, lighting, all of that stuff. So each section will have its own little video. And of course, a free resource file associated with it. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel so you can see when the upcoming videos are going to come up make sure to like the video because it helps me out a lot and yeah let's get into the first part modeling so i'm working in blender 3.3 this is my completely default scene we'll start by first modeling our components so the way we'll go about this, we'll create actually modular pieces that you can then later use in your own creations. So we'll start by deleting everything in the scene at a curve. And the first curve I'll be adding is a arc. I'm not sure. I think you will need to go under your edit preferences and then find, I think, additional curve tools or additional extra objects. So when I have added my arc, these are the settings right here, put the end angle to 90. So we will have a 90 degree section that then we can also duplicate, loop or do whatever we want with it. And I'll just press tab to go into object mode so I can see my little arc right here. I'm going to press seven on my numpad so I am top down view and I'll press S and scale it to two. You can see it in the top left corner. So in my case, I'm going to go under this little object data properties, this little green line right here, and I'm going to choose the resolution preview to be way less than 12. So I don't want to use one because we'll need to have a sharper edge. We'll need to adjust some of that stuff further on, but I have to adjust it to like two or three, something that will keep at least a bit of that edge right there. And then press Alt C, convert it to a mesh and Alt C, convert it back to a curve. If I click, I have these guys right here, a nice little number of curves. So why have we done this? Because we'll actually be using the fill mode here to help us out. So if I press fill mode full and then choose half, nothing is happening because we need to go under geometry and under the bevel section, press the depth and just size it like that. I'll be working in 0 0.25 depth. So it's going to look something like this back into edit mode by pressing tab. Now we need to rotate these so they are at a nice angle. How can we do this? Press control T and then just hold control and move them to 90 degrees like that so that they are nice and aligned. Let's go to numpad seven and check our top down view. So you can see that these guys are slightly off. I'm just gonna press GZ by selecting the top vertex drag it down so it's kind of aligned with the y-axis and i'm going to repeat that step with the x-axis so i'm going to choose the bottom vertex g x and then move it into place sort of like that it doesn't have to be super precise because we're kind of banking on the fact that these are going to have a little gap in between them we'll be using the solidify the bevel so we have a bit of like this little interest in between the curves so we have our little section right here and we can already for example, test some of our stuff by shift the duplicating our Z and then just rotating it on the Z axis by 90 degrees. And we already have our little half semicircle right here. I just want to have a sort of extended section in between here. And how I'm going to do that is just add a curve path. Super simple. I'm going to scale it on the X down and I'm going to pull it down. So it's kind of in this middle of our little curve right here. Let me press GX and move it closer to that curve. So I'm gonna choose one of these circles. Again, we were working with a bevel of 0 0.25. So I'm just gonna choose the path again. I'm gonna choose the fill mode to be half. And then the depth, I'm gonna again adjust it to 0 0.25. Now you can see our measurements are a bit out of whack, even if we correct the scale and stuff like that. And this is something that's going to happen. I'm not entirely sure why this happens. Usually I just then try and eyeball it. So I'm just going to eyeball this bad boy right there. Again, go in my top down, check out how these 
are working, how these gaps are working. Like I said, you can bank a bit on the fact that we'll be using solidifiers and stuff like that, but still, it's good to have this thing a bit more defined. Another thing, if I go into my wireframe, you can notice how many of these steps we have right here, how many resolution cuts of the bevel we have. So I would advise very strongly that you keep these as low as possible or until they make like little squares that still make sense. We're going to do the same for our little path right there. So I'm just going to drop them down to, what was it, two? Yeah, so we're going to drop them down to two. This is done just to have like as few vertices as possible within the system because this is going to be animated also with a rigid body system. So for weaker machines, it's just better to keep this nice and tight. Change to shade flat. So we have a better reproduction we can see the gaps here very clearly love that like it, it's just nice it's also going to add a bit of like this wacky movement to the whole marble thing okay so i'm pulling up that guy again and i'm just moving it on the y-axis i'm selecting the semicircle shift d r z rotating it by 180 degrees and then moving it on the x-axis by pressing g x and there we go this is the base of our marble machine, marble character, so to speak. And now I want to do one thing. I want to keep this just for future reference. So if I want to make any changes, I still have the original somewhere close. So I'm going to make a new collection. By right clicking on the outliner, I'm just going to add a new collection and rename it to track, for example, something like that. And just choose all of the paths and move them into the track. Now I'm going to make a duplicate of these tracks and then just move them into the primary collection and this guy i'll just turn it off meaning it doesn't exist it's not going to render it's not going to be visible but if we need it we have it there just in case now it's time to set up some girth to our little tube so how do we do that we're going to use the modifiers and we're going to go under our modifier section and we have a limited number of modifiers here because we are still working with a path not with an object this is the chain i usually use for myself it works beautifully you can do it however you want just this is going to give you like a nice little gappy result if that if you could say that i'm just going to put a solidify i'm going to put a bevel and then i'm going to put a subdivision surface i'm going to keep it at level viewports and render at one for now but later on maybe i'll probably change it now i'm going to start increasing the thickness of the solidify but i don't want to go inside too much i actually want to keep it outside right now it's going to look like this not very appealing but if we play with our bevel right here and we for example add one more segment so it becomes a bit more sharper and we start lowering down our amount right here, you start seeing that the edges become a bit more defined. We do, however, have still this issue right here, which is easily adjustable by just moving the angle to 40 or 60 if it's super persistent. But this is, for example, a pretty good looking section right here. We can try with the even thickness, something like that. For now, it looks pretty good these are let's say approximately the settings that we will be using so what i want to do now is just backtrack i've made sure that this stuff looks good in a path but if i want to apply the rigid body system i need to have a mesh not a path so how do we proceed with that okay we're going to take away the solidify the bevel and the subdivision now i'm just going to choose all of these guys press alt c and then convert to mesh so now all of our little dudes right here are a mesh. Now it's time to redo the chain. So I'm going to choose again that section that we were working on earlier. Solidify, add a bevel, add a subdivision. I clicked control one. This is like a shortcut to put a subdivision of one super quickly on there. We went outwards, something like that. And segments to two on the bevel. And then amount, lower it down to 0 0.02, something like that. Let's not forget the angle to put it around 40, something like that works. How do we copy these settings? It's a very easy shortcut. We just choose the remaining objects. And then we choose the last one that has all of the modifiers, press control L and then copy modifiers. This is now going to copy all of the modifiers respectively. You can see that here we have like a small issue with these guys right here. Nothing to worry about. We can just increase the thickness and make it match sort of with the rest of the bunch. 
I can also just choose the one that it's still a bit offset, choose the last one again, and use the control L to just copy the exact same settings. This is how our track looks right now. So last thing I want to do is just add two balls that are going to act like eyes. So I'm just going to go mesh, add a UV sphere. So I'm just going to be using a simple UV sphere, nothing complicated, nothing too complex. Let me go into my top down view so I can see just the tightness of these guys right here. Everything seems to work yeah, fine. Let me just move it around. I want to move them so there is a bit of air in between them. We will be working with some types of margins later on, but this is going to be completely fine. And I'm just going to shift D, duplicate it, put it right here. So these are our little eye dudes. A shade smooth, just so everything looks nice and smooth. So last thing I want to do, just a quirky little addition. You don't have to do it. You're completely fine to just completely skip this step, but I'm just going to give it a couple of teeth. So I'm going to add a cube mesh and scale it on the Z down. So I have this form right here. Here I'm kind of eyeballing it. Like I'm not trying to be as precise as earlier with these guys. So I'm just eyeballing the selections, just trying to make the little teeth um, fit into this whole thing. Like I'm just going to put them there super arbitrarily. I'm not just like I would usually study the form and everything, but in this case, it's, you know, just feel free, do however you wish, do whatever you like. Like I said, I just did a control reset the scale and then added a bevel and a subdivision, which adds it a bit of this like nice roundness. I can also lower the levels of the viewport. We don't need to work with such high levels. Maybe I can scale it back on the Z axis to give it like a bit of that, you know, like a bit of that puffiness. So I'm just going to duplicate these bad boys by going into my numpad seven. So I'm in my top down view again. And then I just press shift D and then GX and move these guys on the top. Maybe I can center all of these guys a bit. So I'm just pressing shift, holding down shift and then selecting these little guys right here. And when I have all of the teeth chosen, I can just press shift D and then Y to move them down and just fit them in the bottom part of this thing. In our next tutorial, we'll take a look at how to animate these guys. I'll show you a couple of tricks, how to make super quick animations by just using animation modifiers, which really, really, really speeds up the process sometimes. So you don't have to put everything manually. In any case, hopefully you've learned something useful in terms of modeling in this section. As always, there's going to be a free resource file in the description below. Make sure to subscribe so you see when the next video is coming up. Drop a like. I always appreciate those and leave a comment. I always find time to read those. And if there's something that somebody is particularly lost in, I try and help out. So yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.